Hello, everyone. Welcome to another edition of The Gringo Show. Glad to have you back with us. A lot of news happening this week. So let's get right to it. Last weekend, it was a debate between whose march is bigger than the other. <laughs> Which ultimately means each side has small march syndrome. <laughs> A few weeks ago it was the march in support of the INE, which the government said had about 10,000 people. The more accurate estimates of more than 100,000 people attended the rally. In response to this, AMLO organized a countermarch on Sunday, billing it as his, cuatro, uh, his fourth informe, Mexico's version of the State of the Union address that happens around December 1st. There were definitely a lot of people at the rally that took over seven hours to complete. Of course, the president is not known for doing things quickly. <laughs> Vamos a marchar. <laughs> and not known for doing things quickly like his transformation. <laughs> All right. The debate wasn't much about that there were a lot of people there, but how they got there and why. Reform reported, reported counting 1,787 buses that transported people from as far away as Oaxaca. Those buses were also parked along the route of the march, making it look longer and bigger. Also, there were reports that people felt obligated to attend with pressure from their local entities. And of course, all the memes from the conservative social media like this one who suggested people were bribed with sandwiches. Mmm, mira, I have a torta for you. Will you march? The president's approval rating hovers around 60%, making him one of the most popular democratically elected presidents in the world. So of course people will come to support. He has been able to cut government expenditures and increase spending in aid programs for the poor, which makes up the majority of the country. So of course people will come to support. However, the same government agency that said there were only 10,000 people at the first march then said there were only over a million people who came for this one. What a discrepancy. It also seemed like the government used official funds to transport people as well, and there were reports that people were paid to go. So the question is deeply and authentically, where is the country in regards to electoral reform, or even in what direction the country is moving? I guess we'll see in less than two years at the ballot box. The World Cup is moving on to the next round after a grueling group stage that led to a few surprises. One of those that the U.S. is moving on to the next round. Sorry, Mexico, you're going to be my always my number two in soccer. Aww. I love you, Mexico. If you believe in the mystery around the number seven, Mexico had advanced to the knockout stage in seven World Cups in a row until this year when the tricolor was knocked out by powerhouse Argentina and Poland. Now, no one really expected Mexico to do well in this campaign just because we're a country full of self-deprecators. <laughs> ah, eso es México. Mm? So, of course, enter the chorus of naysayers right away, sharing their displeasure. Many saying that Mexico, with its rabid fans in Qatar, does not deserve this group of players. So what was it? The coach, the players, the government? The owner of TV Azteca, Ricardo Salinas Pliego, got into the debate saying it was, ready? It was the parents' fault. <laughs> saying that they are not pushing them to play a better level of soccer. When someone on Twitter blamed the Federation, he exploded and said, they win millions, they rest well, sleep in a five-star hotel, have a special nutritionist, travel on private flights with tailor-made clothes, physical trainers, play with a perfect ball on a court pruned to the millimeter, and now they lost because of me? Maybe you were talking about yourself, Ricardo. <laughs> Meanwhile, the ghost of Marie Antoinette was like, be careful, Ricardo. <laughs> but the week was not without its political undertones. The US facing off against arch nemesis Iran in their final game in the group stage. And Mexico was facing a scandal, not scandal, because this happened. Messi patea la playera de Mexico. <laughs> oh. M.G. I cannot believe Argentinian soccer star Lionel Messi lightly swiped a Mexican jersey on the floor. What a national disgrace. <laughs> Disgusting. Even though disappearances and homicides rose to record levels this year in the country, this is terrible. A national disgrace. But it was also scary because Mexican boxing champ Canelo Alvarez was really mad about it threatening to beat up Messi if he found him. Now, Lionel, advice. 
This is one of the best boxers in the world. You may want to postpone that Sochi Milko Pyramids trip till next year. <laughs> but also, Canelo, be a man and talk about it instead of challenging one of the greatest soccer players in the world to a fight because he accidentally swiped a jersey. Not classy. But don't worry, Paisanos, Mexico has already qualified for the 2026 World Cup. We'll see them play again right here when it starts in Mexico City. Yeah. The Middle East may not be invading your homes on TV with the World Cup in Qatar, but they may soon be in your wallet too. The Abu Dhabi Investment Group has joined Mifel, led by Daniel Becker and other investors to make a bid for City Banamex. They are just one of two groups remaining in the bid, along with the mining conglomerate Grupo Mexico. Carlos Slim dropped out last week, I guess, because he didn't really need the extra money. It's like another <laughs> bank? Come on. I am volunteering my services to interview the bidders. Just a simple questionnaire about how they plan to run the bank. Like, how many different documents will I need to change my password? <laughs> or, what are your feelings about this comprobante de domicilio? <laughs> On a scale of one to five, how important is this comprobante, eh? <laughs> Will you store your bank information on those three and a half inch floppy disks like the current bank? <laughs> if I'm waiting online and the teller is doing something else, do they stop and attend me? Or do they just ignore me and pretend I'm a ghost? <laughs> just want to offer my help here, guys, to make the bank better. <laughs> American Express announced last week that Mexico City was chosen as one of the top 10 trending places to visit in 2023, based on the amount of reservations made with its credit cards, in which marchers last weekend chanted, Fuera Fresas! Fuera Fresas! Fuera! <laughs> you, all of you, Fuera! <laughs> but it's true, the city is going through an amazing renaissance. Top bands announced this week that they're coming. The weekend announced that it will be playing in Mexico at the end of 2023 to perform at Foro Sol. Mexican dentists everywhere are super excited about this as the most popular song is actually the official Mexican Dentist Association theme song. I can't feel my face when I'm with you, but I love it. Love the dad jokes, right? <laughs> Metallica also announced its world tour to start this year and the Big Taco will actually be its final stop with four concerts to be played in September 2024. Their 12th album is called M72, and I'm wondering at their age if they maybe they can just turn it down a little bit, like a little bit too loud. Metallica, you know? Thanks, Sly. Do you know how to say Metallica in Spanish? Metallica. <laughs> Should be great. That does it for this edition of The Gringo Show. Thanks for staying with us. If you've enjoyed the show, please make sure you like us on Facebook or YouTube. La next week is going to be our season finale, so make sure you tune in for that as well. We read the papers, watch the news, and scroll through social media to share with you what's happening right here in Mexico so you don't have to. Have a great week. Woo!